Maybe tomorrow will be better. Maybe repeating that phrase every day will someday make it true. It had been a week, stretching on and passing like frozen molasses, eyes trained on the clock at work that you swore froze in place while the stacks on your desk climbed skyward, nearing the ceiling in a forest of paper reports, all impatiently demanding to be completed. You were convinced today would never end. A torturous, everlasting shift that proved yet again time wasn't on your side. Weeks like this begged the question, could things get any worse? Ever since Floor 47 had their little break-in, more paperwork was shifted from that floor to yours. There was nothing quite like hearing the clock strike five. To know that you could push past the glass doors and run. You did. Like a child released for recess, your booted feet crunched the powder snow with a smile that for once in the whole day wasn't forced. The air you gulped clawed at your lungs when you breathed, the biting cold tinging your throat and the tip of your nose as you threaded through the crowds, weaving and colliding shoulders with passerbys that would occasionally throw you a slew of insults or the infamous dirty look. Almost there, echoed the thought in your head, feet quickening their pace despite how much your entire body ached for a break. The doors were visible, warm dark wood far more inviting than the coldness of the metal skyscrapers of this city, busy roads interconnecting miles and miles of agencies and growing industries. They bled together, turning this unforgiving city into growing opportunities for the incoming licensed heroes and fellow sponsors. It all looked so… bleak. To you, the promise of prosperity rang hollow to your ears. After all, you were quirkless, not much opportunity for you now, is there? Your frigid hands slapped at your reddening cheeks, effectively snapping you back into the present. No, stop this. You were going to the only place that brought you temporary solace. You have lived through the unnecessary meeting, the ass-chewing of your boss, the hours spent crossing your legs to avoid going to the restroom, the howling of your stomach as it ate your insides, and the heels that made your feet feel like fire. These worries, aches, and pains, they could stay out here in the cold. If you had to place why you gravitated to this bar, part of you would blame its cozy atmosphere, warm tones of wooden stools and tables more forgiving than the metallic desks of work. Part of you liked the music, often slow and leisurely, a sad tune of a lost soul, a tragic tale beating out of the jukebox thinly veiled in a country or classic rock melody. But if you were asked to be honest, about why you truly came back to this place, it was for the shattered spirits. People didn't come to this bar with nothing on their mind, some taking to the bitter taste of alcohol to remember, to forget. Whether it was a feeling or memory, they found harmony in the brokenness of others. You were no different. Their eyes. Their eyes cried the stories they chose to hold on the tip of their tongue. Years of torment made even the brightest coloured orbs gaze lifelessly into their emptying glass. They were broken, several lifetimes past repair. When you surround yourself with people like that, it's comforting, in its own strange way. Collecting in this lost and found space, knowing, praying they will eventually find the place where they were supposed to be. Well, except for one. Your hands pressed flat against the wooden doors, intricate score marks and designs feeling familiar on your fingertips, and pushed forward. The rush of warmth was immediate, smoke-tinged air engulfing your senses. Your smile grew, eyes falling on the familiar sets of faces that chorused a greeting when you slammed the doors shut before winter could let the cold in. The usual called the bearded bartender, instinctively reaching for a nearby glass. 
Halfway, shrugging off your coat, you turned and agreed, pausing to throw the man a grateful look when he hummed, spinning to the wall of glass bottles to pick your poison. Your eyes wandered, fishing out a set of cards in pursuit of any willing participants to play the evening away. Money or plastic stripped chips, you were down for anything. The muscle beating in your chest leapt into your throat, roaring the blood in your ears when you spotted the pair of folded wings. Your feet refused to comply, rooting into the ground while a toxic concoction of excitement and jealousy simmered your insides. Of course, he was talking to another woman, one who you begrudgingly recognized as breathtaking. In her hands dangled a glass, contents of a deep maroon wine swirling languidly as she talked, leaning against the hero with a smile. You caught the way his wings twitched at the contact, probably from excitement. You didn't care. None the slightest. You had to rein in your curdling mood to keep your face neutral, opting to fiddle with the hem of your shirt and bite your bottom lip to keep a frown from showing. You managed. Barely. Okay, maybe this week could get worse, though you meant it as a metaphorical question, not a challenge. Damn the god who took it as such. Actually, you called to the bartender, an apologetic grin stretching your features. Make it a double. His brows raised, though he didn't question it, placing a smaller glass down in favor for a larger mug. Your feet stiffly marched to the beat of the music, listening to the words in a vain attempt to keep your mind busied as you located a corner table. Eventually, your hands weaved around the chilled glass, cold turning your body warm as the alcohol slipped effortlessly past your lips. The bitter aftertaste was nothing but an afterthought, instead chasing the buzz that would finally bring you peace. With enough in your system, you finally forgot about the time. With no players, you ended up shuffling the cards over and over while your eyes cast a glance at the winged hero. Why did you get excited to see he was alone? He was a stranger after all. Of course, this can only be the case because you didn't know his name. You told yourself that you didn't want to. You certainly recognized those amber eyes. They always lingered straying more and more to your form as his mug emptied and slid to the bartender for another. You weren't dumb. You knew better than to let your interest in a man you saw so sparingly grow and fester into attraction. You didn't want to feel this way, like all the other spellbound women that let themselves be lured in, intoxicated in more ways than one as they became nothing but smiles. From tears to happiness, it was a switch this hero could flick inside everyone. You definitely weren't counting, definitely didn't feel the heat rise to the tips of your ears because he was looking your direction. Right, it was just the alcohol. But still, even without a drop in your system, you could admit the winged hero was striking. A boyish charm you couldn't quite place and certainly didn't react to when you saw his face crack a smile. Boyish indeed. He wanted everyone's attention, grabbing it with a quick-witted joke that made them mirror his same grin. He was contagious, passing along his excitement when a particular topic you couldn't decipher had him wriggling in his bar stool, his fingertips thrumming against the counter in an inharmonious series of taps and thumps while his dangling feet kick at the open air. He talked with everyone. A man with a tear-stained shirt and a rum and coke. A man that only knew sorrow and a way to run from it. He helped him find his smile. Another regular, a woman, a black number that clung to every curve and dip of her body, she was no different. The gruff bartender with a glass in hand, cleaning the cup meticulously with his calloused palms even found a reason to smile. He was a sight for sore eyes, that much was certain. One that you didn't think you'll ever get tired of seeing. He was alluring. The plumage of Vermilion was always so enchanting in this dim light. The color glinted like metal, 
mirrored against the warm, glossy wood to wash the surrounding bar in the same gorgeous hue. You couldn't place why you found him this charming. Every rational thought you had encouraged you to just look away. You succeeded for a while, but always found yourself sparing him a glance, sure that his attention was absorbed elsewhere before letting your eyes deconstruct every tiny detail of those feathers. You stopped yourself, coming to the realization that, from an outsider's point of view, your infatuation teetered near the line of pure insanity. Did you have to make it this obvious how messed up you were? Okay, that was enough alcohol, you reasoned, pushing the remnants of the alcohol out of your reach with a huff. Now isn't the time to be entertaining these intrusive thoughts. You sighed, shuffling and cutting the deck to get your mind back into somewhere more indifferent and less, well, confusing. Each flick of the cards that graced your fingertips was an accustomed calming sensation, turning each one over on the table with feigned interest as you counted. The jacks, spades, diamonds all accounted for. The hearts were next. You tallied, mentally counting to the magic number. 52. 51. With an irritated sigh, you counted again. 51. You grouped the cards together and fanned them out. King of Hearts. Where was the last King of Hearts? Well, this is fantastic. You managed to misplace a card within... What? A couple of hours? How was it possible for you to keep thorough accounts on each sheet of jumbled paper in your office, yet lose one of the most essential cards five steps from the door. You knew the answer. Despite solemnly swearing each time you came to visit, you wouldn't look for the hero. It just happened. I sweeping the room for the familiar shade of red when his back faced you. You promised yourself you wouldn't next time. Next time, you won't look. And here you were letting your inner lovesick self take reign over your heart, echoing the same outrageous thought over and over. Talk to him. You refused. Hell will freeze over. Pigs will become airbound. The rain will fall upward before you ever allowed your backside to move from this chair. You knew seeing a flame so bright, so soothing as his, was best viewed from a distance knew that a moth's deadly attraction to a flame led to self-destruction. Every part of you yearned for his light. His radiance was so much greater than yours. You couldn't help the small, senseless part of you from finding it attractive. And that's precisely why you would keep your distance. But God damn it. What is a moth to do when the flame draws closer to you? You briefly paused when the hero abruptly swiveled his bar stool, eyes scanning, looking for entertainment in the near empty space. You were way too close for comfort to his observant gaze, your wariness morphing into dread the moment he clutched the bottom of the seat to stop him from spinning. Without entirely meaning to your whole body bristled, focusing on the way his wings fluffed from your periphery. A whistle escaped his lips, long and drawn out as you resisted the urge to hurdle your mug at him. He flapped his wings. Once, then another. Your only response was the tightening grip you held onto your glass, fingertips paling. You would lose your standoff when you dramatically rolled your eyes, briefly casting him a frigid glare that urged him to throw himself off the nearest building. That was your first mistake. His eyes locked to yours and he began another revolution. His head stayed in your direction as his body spun. While his head tilted, a few strands of windswept locks fell into his face and he raked his fingers through the mess of blonde, giving you a look you can only describe as fascination. Don't you dare... You warned, silently, giving the winged hero a distrustful glower, 
and banged the deck of cards on the table with a sharp clack when he orbited in his bar stool. His eyes twinkled, only kindling with more interest when you fervently thrashed your head from side to side. He nodded, grin reaching his ears, eyes never straying from yours and ignoring your silent pleas with a shimmy down from his seat. Boyish indeed. Absolutely, positively childish. Why did you have to be you? You shrieked internally. The cards fell deftly into a clumsy stack on the table, your hands hiding your face in an effort to disguise the confusing emotions resurfacing and peeking through your cold demeanor. Your reddening cheeks, the excitement that thrummed your heart, and the dopey grin that threatened to peek through. He cleared his throat, and you didn't budge. Go away, you repeatedly chanted in your head face heating up in what you knew must be equal to that of a tomato. His clothes rustled and you strained to listen, arrogantly believing your silent plea was heard before his voice reached your ears. Now, don't be alarmed, whispered his voice, so much closer that you jumped in surprise. But I think I have your heart. Now the pure absurdity of the statement was too much for you to handle, though it didn't take an expert to see you were hopelessly head over heels for him. You didn't want to be this readable, but it seemed in any situation outside of cards, you just couldn't seem to keep your poker face. <laughs> that obvious, huh? You questioned, letting out a pathetic laugh as your eyes took in the darkness behind your hands. I'd say so, he affirmed. You dropped this little guy at the front entrance. You peeked through your fingers, eyes falling on your missing car delicately held between his gloved thumb and index finger, innocently turning to reveal both sides of the lone, missed King of Hearts. How did you- You started, fully prepared to hurdle mixed curses that happened to cross your mind before the sudden realization hit you. You just admitted that you, that he, oh god. Your now revealed face bloomed dreadfully darker, his grin in turn widening. You need to be more careful, who knows who could have snatched it up. <laughs> he chuckled, with one final twirl his hand extended out to offer you the card. Name's Hawks. What's yours? Hawks's name registered. An attractive name to complement his bird counterpart, you reasoned. The expression you were sporting was absolutely priceless. The catastrophic combination of confusion, embarrassment and hostility brimming for control that had your jaw on the floor was one for the books. And the hero took a mental note to have his camera ready next time he talked with you. You wanted to hide away, to pretend this day never happened in the company of a gallon of ice cream and a couple glasses of wine while you sobbed pathetically in your PJs and comforter, allowing your fit of self-pity engulf you completely. Your shattered pride can be tended to later, not bothering to keep the malice from your voice. You lunged. Then why didn't you just... You darted forward to tear away the card with a withering look. Tell me when I dropped it. He leaned back in his chair and shrugged. I needed a reason to talk to you. He admitted without hesitation, sounding incredibly innocent compared to the mischievous glimmer in his eyes. When you didn't respond, he scooted the wooden chair closer to the table's edge, centimeter by centimeter producing a god-awful creak against the floor with each movement. And you look like you've got something on your mind. In lieu of a proper response, you took the emptied glass mug in your hands, suddenly attentive to take in every detail of the transparent object as you dragged it towards you. Rough day, he offered, resting his elbow on the table's surface to prop his chin in his palm smile softening knowingly. Like any other, droned your half-hearted response,
finger ghosting the rim of your emptied glass. Hmm, is that so? He hummed, leaning into the counter, now resting both elbows on the table. Wanna talk about it? As repulsive as the offer initially sounded, you couldn't find the nerve to downright refuse the invitation. He didn't seem to have any motive behind it. His laid-back demeanor gave a hint this time out of his day wasn't remarkable. A means to an end. A way to ignore the time as it passed. But you hated to be the cause of your first interaction with him, leaving a bitter taste in his mouth. Your life wasn't exactly, well, memorable. If anything, you wouldn't hesitate for one last do-over, to smash a randomization button for the slim chance to become someone heroic, to not feel disgusted and trapped in your own skin. It's just the... I mean... You stumbled over your words, gathering your wits and trying a different approach. Things have just... Lately, things are... Your hands abandoned the glass to gesture in the air, motioning for the words to fall off your tongue, but nothing happened. No words came to your aid, and the silence felt heavier. It made you wish that you had the voice to fill it. Hey, stranger, that I've grown a senseless attraction to. I've got baggage like everyone else here, centered around my lack of a quirk and control of my life that I willingly hand off to others. Let me give you a glimpse into my woes so you too can see how pitiful my life has become. You weren't prepared for that question. Usually your well-being was never questioned among your workplace. As long as your hands could write, and you were coherent enough to answer incoming calls, you were never spared a second glance. Ever. Where numbers outweighed feelings, you knew how cold-natured it sounded, but that's the choice you were faced with, or lack thereof. One that you haven't entirely accepted, be it the small inkling of a determination that resided bone deep, that instinctual drive to keep pushing onward, to become the hero, younger you fantasized being, scribbling your hero costume in crayon, you just couldn't let that go. No matter how reasonable it was to throw those drawings into a fire and watch them ignite and fizzle away completely. If you did that, well, there wouldn't be any hope left after that. Okay, let's try something else. With deliberate movements, you place the King of Hearts in the middle of the deck, giving one final shuffle before placing the deck to the side. You drew one card at a time, slowly stacking the cards in a pyramid shape as the hero observed in silence, eyes overflowing with curiosity as his tapping at the table ensued, though he kept his lips sealed. Um, I... I don't feel in control of my life. You started, feeling his stare shift between you and the cards you continue to stack. Without warning, with no rhyme or reason, things just... You shoved yourself back and on your feet, drawing in a lungful of air before gently blowing air towards the delicate stack that crumpled, silently falling into a pathetic disordered heap back on the table. They topple over and crumble away. A collapsing house of cards, back to square one. Nothing. You tried to keep the bitterness from your tone, but you couldn't keep it from intermingling with your words. It bursted through despite your efforts, overflowing the pent-up negative emotions that made your limbs rigid while your brow creased. Your mouth felt dry at the admission, tongue rolling uncomfortably in your mouth like sandpaper. Reveling in these emotions forced you to continue. That's what my life feels like. I stack these cards as carefully as possible, one on top of the other, step by step and make progress. It could be a few or many, but the ending is the same. Your hand swept to gesture at the pile once more. They fall. The weight of your admission is too much for your legs to balance, 
Slumping into your seat, you leaned your elbows on your knees, bowing while running your palms down the length of your face. Uh, sometimes I don't know why I even try anymore, you murmured, once again seeking shelter behind the dark comfort of your hands. This out was as good as any. You mentally prepared yourself for the hero to walk away, to decide you were better off alone as he jolted back in his seat with disgust and take his leave. You couldn't bring yourself to look at him. The growing sense of shame had you wilting in on yourself. You felt so… small, spilling your uncertainties out in front of someone like this, assuming the worst and only receiving confirmation when you heard the legs of his chair groan against the floor. Something in your heart twisted in agony, once again submerging you deeper in the cruel reality you no longer wanted to be a part of. Some of your hair fell in your face and curtained your eyes, your cheeks felt damp and your vision continued to swim under the constant waves of new tears. You never should have bothered not knowing what to do other than focus on holding back a sob. Something about this felt familiar. Was it the crushing defeat? Or the sobering bitterness your life possessed? You couldn't tell the difference anymore. Hawks rose to hug the cards in towards him, making quick work to return them into a neat pile. The noise beckoned your attention silently following his hands, shuffling and bridging the cards in an almost untraceable whirl of speed before fanning them out along the expanse of the table. Well, you could always do something else with some cards. He smiled, briefly casting you a glance through his lashes to make sure he had your attention. A strangled, what, is all your mind could think to say. In your amazement, you could only watch him flick the cards face up, flicking one end, creating a domino effect that your eyes followed in all. <laughs> Come on, there's plenty you can do with some cards. Just like that, they were in a deck once more. You can flip them, shuffle them. Hawks leaned closer to whisper, grin turning maniacal as he soaked in your surprised expression. Say screw it and toss them. To your dismay, he did just that. Hawks launched the deck into the air. You let out a squawk of disbelief, finding your footing and outstretching your arms to catch the airborne stack. Glimmers of crimson made you freeze. Feathers. Launching from his back to retrieve each twisting card while he didn't bat an eye looking incredibly relaxed and smug with himself with arms crossed behind his head. Once again, the deck was in his hands. I think you are taking my metaphor a little too seriously. I'm talking about my train wreck of a life here. You pointed out, brows furrowing in your confusion. My point is, you don't have to keep doing the same thing if it doesn't make you happy. He took a moment to cut the cards before continuing. Maybe instead of accepting this path of yours in all its misery, try something else. Don't like the game you're playing? Learn to play a different one. On that note… Something flashed in his eyes. Before you could question it, it was gone, replaced by his usual jovial disposition when he fanned out the cards in his hands nodding for you to take one. <sighs> As if it's ever that easy. You grumbled derisively with a click of your tongue. Hawks bobbed in agreement. You're right about that one. Change is hard. Really hard. But last time I checked, it doesn't share the same definition as impossible. Hawks pointed out with a shake of his head. Now, pick one. He leaned over the table's edge, happily shoving the cards inches from your nose. The close proximity made you lean back a little. <sighs> it sure does feel like it sometimes. You admitted, anger fizzling out, and you deflated. It also doesn't have to be alone. 
Playing cards can be a multiplayer game too, Hawks said with a waggle of his unkempt brows, and you scowled, only growing when he leaned forward again to burst your personal bubble. Okay, you can stop with the card spiel. I am feared in the goatfish community, he grinned. He then moved his arms up and down, fanning small puffs of air towards your face. A few stray strands flew across it, the urge to launch your mug into his smug mug skyrocketed. Stop, you warned in a biting tone. Slapjack was made for me. I'm quite fast. Seriously? You're smiling. The problem was, you were. You didn't have the chance to hide away your face. The alcohol intermingling with your blood made that much harder to keep the worrisome emotions in line. Now, you were smiling. A full, dopey grin that felt... right. You could get used to this. Wanted to spend the rest of time right here in this moment, with a man that weaseled his way through your frigid demeanor. You reached forward and snatched a card, careful to keep the face cards towards you and squinted. What game are we playing? You inquired after a brief peek of the card's identity. <laughs> I'll make you a deal, Hawks announced with a puff of his chest, slinking back to sit in his seat. If I guess the card in your hand. He set the deck down and jutted his thumb to his chest. I win. This made you shiver, hugging the face of the card into your chest in suspicion. What do you get if that happens? Hawks already knew the answer, yet intended to make a show of his contemplation by fussing with the neat lines on the curve of his chin, leaving you squirming in anticipation. If I win... He started, words rolling from his tongue slow and deliberate. You work with me, and I get to choose the place where we have our dinner date. The way he said it, without a hint of any misgivings or sarcasm, made the temperature in the room soar. Your eyebrows shot up and you let out a strangled noise of surprise. Um, mm. and if I win? You managed to squeak. Hawks simply shrugged with a welcoming smile. Same thing. Instead, you get to pick where we eat. The night ended with a round of drinks before Hawks trudged his way back to his home. After a few unruly card games with the suspect at the bar, he had won them over, playing the game and organizing another meet close to their workplace for their date. His face, flushed from the alcohol, did nothing but help him keep warm against the chill night air. He ruffled his wings but slightly, wincing from the sting that still persisted. Now that a few days have passed since the break-in, he had tried to go about his days nonchalantly, but was mindful not to take flight whenever possible. It was almost foreign to walk home, at least at a certain distance, but he made a promise, and he was still in the middle of something that required his attention, which entailed a full recovery as soon as possible. As soon as he reached his apartment block, Hawks ruffled his wings again, tolerating the slight pain that surged through them before he took flight. He was on the topmost floor, the presidential suite as most people would call it. He would just prefer to call it home, and it was easier to enter and exit without any worry of anyone breaking and entering. Landing upon his balcony, Hawks slowly opened the large window-paned glass doors, making sure not to disturb his new guest inside. How did it go? Spoke a voice as he entered the large lounge room. There, he spotted you, sitting by the large couch wearing one of his large shirts. Ever since deciding to bring you to his impromptu, you had nothing except for the clothes you had on your back. 
and so he offered his wardrobe in case you needed a change of clothes. Hawks shut the doors, and closing his wings behind him as slowly as possible. <sighs> Perfectly, he answered as he ruffled his wings slightly in annoyance. You walked up to him, reaching your fingers into his feathers carefully before revealing the wound underneath. Oh, you've reopened it somehow, you spoke, spotting the red seeping through on the wrappings and gauze around his winged frame. I mean, I could try again. It's better to rewrap it clean than leaving it. That much I know. Hawks smirked as he gently pushed you back onto the couch with his wings in tow. He sat, crumpling the material of the couch while you gathered all you needed to rewrap his injury. It wasn't terrible, but with every scrunch of his face you knew it hindered his work and his way of travelling. The sooner he healed, the sooner he could do his job. So, you reckon someone is a mole? You questioned while you made your final wrappings around his wound. You know I can't tell you anything more than what I already have, right? He teased. Hmm, I'm aware, you hummed slightly dejected. But I am involved as a target. He finished and corrected. Sorry, Dove. Need to know basis. <sighs> you sighed, exhaling in annoyance before you tightened the wrapping too tightly around his wound. <laughs> Ow. Oh god, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I probably deserved that. Hawks stretched his wings out, ensuring that he still had some mobility after the new wrappings had been applied. Um, thanks, Kago. You spoke while he flapped his wings momentarily. Don't know how long you plan on cooping me in here for, but thanks all the same. Hawks turned to you before he pulled off his jacket slipping his wings effortlessly yet slightly uncomfortably through them. Still in his hero gear, he headed for his bathroom, pulling off his black tight-fitting shirt in the process. <laughs> you sure? Cause I can assure you that I most probably reek like a drunkard right now. He joked. Oh, my sense of smell hasn't been lost on me. You quipped back. I've been holding my breath the whole time here. Hawks turned to you, shirtless, and smirked. Well, do I get a reward if I clean myself off like a good boy? Your face faltered slightly at the suggestion before you looked away towards the balcony doors, towards the night sky instead. Hawks chuckled in response. <laughs> I'm kidding. Although I'd appreciate having my bed back and you head to yours for the night. With that, he left for his bathroom, shutting the door before you heard the sound of rushing water hit your ears. You eyed his bedroom. Your room for the time you've been staying here. Hawks had insisted you did, and he would take the couch, mentioning that it would be easier because of his line of work anyway. Picking up his jacket and his shirt, you could smell the liquor on them, with a smoky undertone. You couldn't tell if he was working or just having a good time, but after what had happened at your workplace, you couldn't really judge him for it. Throwing them in a makeshift laundry hamper in the lounge room, you made your way to his bedroom, turning back to the bathroom door with a smile and an uncertainty washing over you. While Hawks stood in his shower, allowing the water to wash the smell of alcohol and smoke from his skin, his eyes intensely stared down at the tiled wet floor. All he needed was information, and his suspect was the closest he could get to grabbing some. After all, they had been in close contact with the League indirectly, through numbers and papers. <laughs>